Welcome to the FCA Leadership Forum 5 Question Series. I'm Bob Ackerman, the Editor-in-Chief of Signal Magazine. Today we welcome Al McMichael, retired Sergeant Major of the U.S. Marine Corps. In his 36-year career with the Marines, Al set a shining example for leadership. In 1999, he was appointed the 14th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, the senior ranking enlisted member and principal advisor to the Commandant. He actively supported fellow Marines in quality of life issues, including testifying before Congress on their behalf. In 2003, he became the first senior enlisted advisor to NATO, responsible for 2.3 million military personnel from 28 nations. Today, Al is CEO and President of McMichael Services Group, which provides critical client services ranging from custodial support to physical and cyber security. He also is the founder and president of For Drew Foundation, an organization that supports children at risk and provides leadership and mentor counseling for high schools. In 2008, Al authored the book Leadership, Achieving Life-Changing Success from Within. Al, welcome to us, see you. Thank you for joining us. Well, I'm proud and privileged to be with you, Bob. Before we begin the five questions, I'd like to ask you a question separate from that. Assuming that leaders are made and not born, what is the key to an individual of humble origins becoming a leader? Well, I, I first let me say I agree with you 100%. Uh, leaders are, are very often said born leaders, but I believe that they're developed and they grow into what they do because that was the uh, path that I took, uh, being developed and shaped and, and tutored to be what I ended up as a leader and leading men and women of our armed forces. So leadership is, is something that comes from within a person, the, the habits that they have, the behavior that they have, the lifestyle that they live, and the faith and the belief that they live by. So it's something that is shaped and molded in you. How do you nurture that kind of thing? Well, it takes a lot of self-discipline. And self-discipline is the key to all success because it's not what I do in front of Bob. It's what I do in the absence of Bob. It's what I do when I'm not standing in the spotlight. It's when I, I'm honest and true to myself, knowing the difference between right and wrong and applying that, that it becomes a part of your behavior and your nature and your habits. Well, what would you say are the characteristics in an individual that mark that person as a potential leader? Well, you know, for me, I think before you can mark anything within in yourself, you first have to learn to love yourself completely if you are to uh, love others adequately. If you're not completely sound within yourself, then you build your foundation of who you are, your character, your morals, your ethics, your behavior, your beliefs, all on a sandy foundation. And the first wind of hurricane or tornado or rain a storm, it washes away all that you stand for. That's why uh, in society today we see a lot of prominent, uh, as we may think, people in our, in our lives fall from grace because the foundation that they were uh, asked to uh, base their life on was not solid. So leadership must be from the core. Leadership is from the core. Leadership is like saving money. 99 cent, if you save a dollar, you can't make a dollar out of 99 pennies. In other words, you just got to have that one more. You can put 99 pennies in your pocket, you're still short. If you go into leadership and you can only fake it and not do it, you're going to end up short. And more importantly, you're going to ruin the lives of some very important people who have expectations of you as their leader. Apropos to that, what is the most important skill for a leader to have? I think the most important skill is honesty. And uh, it's more of a, a trait, uh, a principle that you live by. But your word should be your bond, and your handshake should be your signature. You live by that. It's the best contract that you could ever have in living your life because you can lay your head on the pillow at night and feel good that you have accomplished something. It doesn't have to be uh, a world global thing, but in your heart and soul, you knew that you treated everyone that you encountered that day and in your life with dignity and respect. When do you know? that your leadership style, for lack of a better word, is working. What are the indicators? For me, the indicator of, of a working leader uh, style that when it affects others to follow you willingly and they follow you because you inspired them, not because you threatened them. They want to be like you because they see 
uh, the expectations. You define the things that they are uncertain about. Rather than looking up in a dictionary, rather than going to the website, rather than Googling it, they look to you and you become that example. And when you live to that example, in the dark, as well as in the light, under the sunlight, as well as the moonlight, you come out feeling good about your style of leadership because you have changed people's lives without a threat, without a demand, just simply inspiration. How does it show in others that you can see though that your leadership is successful? Well, it's kind of like being the old farmer, you know, and you, you have a, a, a stallion and you have that mare and then next time you turn around, you got a pony and, and uh, because you begin to multiply. Your way of life starts to take over an organization. It's not you anymore, the, the long ranger trying to influence people. Your style has infected and, and encouraged people that they start preaching your style. And, and that's when you know that you won the war, you won the fight. Life is, of course, one long lesson book. We learn from our successes and we learn from our failures. Yes. What would you say was your greatest failure and what did you learn from it? I think the greatest failure for me was the uh, lack of having the confidence of knowing who you were. That you miss un I missed taking the, the term different. I thought being different meant second. I thought being different meant uh, last. But different for me uh, turned out to be I was different to make a difference. And when you learn to make a difference with the things that other people see you different at, when you're the one that chooses as a teenager not to smoke, not to drink, not to be a, 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 a cohooser, and you're different, that's not bad. You learn to take that and turn it to a positive. You do that to make a difference. Then you know that you're, uh, you're not really a failure. You take those things that you think are failures and start to analyze them to see how good they turn out to be. But as you just said, that's not really a failure to be different when you're not doing something wrong. But when you think it's, it's a failure, when you, you fail to, to take that and prosper oh, with it, okay. you fail to seize an opportunity. Uh, you're 15, 16, 17 years old, and you think being different was something that you had to hide, something you had to be af afraid to demonstrate or show or act on. But when you grow up, and take the, inst the instincts of a man and realize that I don't have to be ashamed of what I am or who I am or the way I do it because the way I do it make things much better and make people feel good about being around you. You're talking about being a role model for everyone. So let me ask you, who are your heroes and how did they serve as role models? That's simple. That's one of the best questions that I'm ever asked of who's my role model, who's my hero. Uh, not living a majestic life, but living a life of, of opportunity. Uh, growing up in the rural parts of, of the South, uh, raised by a single mom uh, with 10 children, nine siblings, my role model was very easy. A lady who never took welfare, a lady that never asked us to do without, never allowed any of her children to be threatened with orphanages or, or stay away homes. Uh, a woman that got up in the morning to go to work, to get home in time to go to her day job and got off her day job looking for part-time work, to give her children all the things that they uh, needed and some of the things that we wanted, uh, to see her heart, determination and, and commitment to the, the life that she had born into this world and didn't think that society had a responsibility to take care of them. She took that responsibility, but she also took the responsibility to guide and, and teach and educate and train us to be decent citizens. How do you get young people today to relate to that kind of a hero? I think the, 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 the joy of, of working with young people and getting them to understand, um, to focus on good leadership, is leadership has to stop criticizing and start performing with them. See, I have a, a model that I refuse to criticize the youth of our country today unless I'm making a contribution to them. And that's what my uh, Ford Drew program is about, taking the time to help guide them from the uh, toxic uh, failures of life. If you just stand on the sideline and criticize, then they fall in. That's like watching a drowning man and do nothing to help him. So I have take great pride in communicating with the youth of our society today. I understand that you cannot be Dinah Shore and Perry Como and expect to communicate with the Britney Spears and Justin Bimberley of today. It will not work. 
educate yourself for the environment. I call it the GGC, generation, gender, and culture. Educate yourself in those three areas and then take action and step out there and, and implement those things in the environment that you're in. But don't stand back and criticize the young people of today and, and say they don't follow good examples, they don't uh, have good morals and ethics. They have what we demonstrate to them. There's no overbeast child in this world today that should be criticized for being overbeast because they don't have a job and they can't buy the food that they eat. If they're wearing their pants down and they're too big, that's not their fault because they don't have money or job to buy the pants that are too big and saggy. That means somebody is providing them with the wrong tools in their life to go down the wrong path in life to be the good people we expect them to be in life. If you want them with their self-esteem up, their heads up and their pants up, then buy pants that fit. Give them a reason to hold their head up. Give them something to look at you as an example. Let yourself be the one that they want to raise their head up and focus on you as, a, as what they should be and what they should strive to be. And that's true leadership. That's leadership. Well, thank you very much for your service to the free world and for giving us your insight and perspective on leadership. We appreciate your support and good luck on your endeavors. Thank you very much, Bob. I'm Bob Ackerman and you've been watching the AFSIA Leadership Forum 5 Question Series. <laughs>